for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shots. Snip of the Mad Cheese as always. Got a Madden 23 video for you guys today. Today, I'm be going over the latest speculation when it comes to the major news that's going to be dropping pretty soon when it comes to Madden 23. Starting off with probably the most important news, which is going to be the beta. Uh, how to get onto the beta, how to sign up for the beta, how to play the beta. I played the beta last year. I was one of the lucky people that was chosen to play it, so I got to play it early. I couldn't share any gameplay footage or anything like that. Typically, when you get the, uh, the approval to be on the beta, uh, you can't share any opinions. You can't really share anything about it. But if you want to play it first, if you want to get some time with it, hands-on experience with it, I'm going to show you guys uh, one of the better ways to get a head start on that. Uh, before I do, if you guys want to see more videos like this, as always, hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section. I'll continue to put them out. Other than that, let's get right into the video. Now, in today's video, I'm going to go over a couple things. Like I said, I'm going to go over the beta. I'm going to go over the cover athlete. I'm going to go over uh, the potential release date. Now, probably the most important one, I'll get this out of the way first. This is going to be about the beta sign-up. This is something that Mutt Leak's Twitter account recently put out a couple days ago saying that the beta sign-ups will be opening in the next coming days. So basically, if you guys don't know what the beta sign-up is, it's typically something you have to do on EA's website. Last year, they didn't really announce anything at all. They just kind of had uh, something that popped up on their, their uh, traditional website, and people were questioning what it was, and it turned out to be the beta sign-ups. Mutt Leaks was the one that cracked that last year, so they're a very good Twitter handle to follow. Uh, if something comes out official, I will post a video about it, just like I did last year. Like I said, I got on it early, and I was lucky enough to be one of the people that was chosen to play the beta early now as far as the beta it's going to be on next gen only which is basically what it was last year they're not going to change that we're a year further in the next gen consoles so they're not going to go backwards like i said nothing's official but they're not going to go backwards and they're not going to have last gen or current gen uh in the beta so basically if you're on next gen consoles you will have an opportunity to play the beta i got on last year maybe because i was one of the few people that have next gen consoles last year maybe it'll be harder to get on next this year but ultimately it will be a next gen thing if you don't have that then you probably shouldn't waste your I'm trying to sign up. Now, next up, we're going to go over the release date, the potential release date. I see a lot of people speculating that the game will be available uh, Friday, August 19th. Now, that probably doesn't make a lot of sense if you compare it to some of the release dates that they put out in the past. Uh, typically, they like to release the game somewhere in the preseason, a couple weeks before the season starts. This year, the season starts on September 8th. Last year, it started on September 9th. So, we use the same formula. We can go backwards about three weeks. Like I said, last year, the release date was August 17th. I think it was a Tuesday last year. They like to give you the option to buy like the Hall of Fame edition so that you can get the game a couple days early. Typically, it'll be like the Friday going into a weekend for the early release. So that's probably what they'll try to do again this year. So with that in mind, I really think that you're looking at two potential release dates, either the 16th, which is, which is a Tuesday once again, which will set them up perfectly for people that want to get the early release and get that game on a Friday going into a weekend where they're off. Or we're looking at a release date of August 23rd which is also a Tuesday once again the early release date would be on a Friday which would be the 19th so I really think that you're looking at a release date between those two dates if you guys don't know video games typically release on Tuesdays there's a purpose behind this it's so retailers can have them in stock by Friday that's essentially how it works they expect uh, you know traffic and stores to pick up by Friday so it's released on Tuesdays because they're expecting more people to be buying them closer to the end of the week so that's why typically all video games are released on Tuesdays which makes the most sense for this game to be dropping either on the 16th or the 23rd which is once again a Tuesday now the next thing I'm going to go over is the cover athlete cover athlete is typically one of the first things that comes out when it comes to a new game that's one of the things that really uh, is like the first big drop then they do things like the ratings and the trailer and all that stuff but ultimately cover athlete when that drops that's really like the start of the upcoming games uh you know information leaks uh to me cover athlete can be chosen from a number of different things a lot of times it's based off of marketability uh, a lot of times it's based off of um, you know, just whatever the hot young player is coming up in the game. A lot of times they think that's going to move copies. Uh, and a lot of times they use a cover athlete um, that can really just encompass whatever the new features or whatever the new functions are in the game. They want to choose a cover athlete that kind of mirrors that. So it's another way of kind of marketing that how new it is and how, uh, you know, the new features are really going to be important and make it important to buy a new copy of the game. Now, the cover athlete that I think encompasses all that, I'll get to in a minute, but I'm going to go over, you know, a couple guys 
guys that I think really have the best chance of being cover athletes. Now, one of the most popular ones that I hear a lot of people speculating is Joe Burrow. It makes a lot of sense to me. I mean, he's a popular athlete. He definitely came out of nowhere last year. He's a former number one pick, but he came out of nowhere last year to take the Bengals all the way to the Super Bowl. And I think a lot of people will probably be expecting them to have a chance to go back. So that's not a horrible one, but that's not one that I really think is going to happen. For whatever reason, I mean, I always feel like quarterbacks make the most sense, especially in today's NFL. Quarterbacks are like the divas of the league. They're almost like the NBA superstars. Uh, they, they make their own moves. They, they force their way off of teams, and they force their way to go where they want to go. They make the decisions in a way uh, that affect the entire league. So it makes a lot of sense if they stick with quarterback like they have the last couple years with Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady. It wouldn't surprise me if Tom Brady was on the cover again based on the fact that this is probably going to be his last year. He just came out of retirement. There'll probably be some sort of addition, maybe a Hall of Fame addition with him on it. I know a lot of people are saying that John Madden, the year after his passing, uh, makes a lot of sense that he's going to have some sort of Hall of Fame edition cover, uh, which makes a lot of sense. But ultimately, you know, if you go through quarterbacks in general, General, there's a lot of guys that really could fall in this category. I mean, Patrick Mahomes has been on it enough. I don't think the way that his year ended last year, he really stands a chance to get on it again this year. Uh, but there's a lot of really good options. I'm just going to go over the quarterback options really quick because I don't think any of them are going to get it. It makes a lot of sense because quarterbacks are the most marketable stars, but I really think, I really have an opinion that it's probably going to surprise a lot of people who I think is going to be the cover athlete. Another really good option would be Josh Allen. Uh, he's somebody that, once again, superstar quarterback, Maybe the best quarterback in the league. I love him. Everybody, I love playing with him. He's one of the funnest players to play with. The only problem is his season really didn't end in a way that makes me think that he deserves it over any other player. Another young superstar quarterback that kind of fits that bill would be Justin Herbert. But once again, the, the Chargers don't really have, you know, they even make playoffs last year. They don't really have a dedicated fan base. That doesn't make a lot of sense unless the season ended a certain way. And that's kind of what I feel with Joe Burrow. If the season ended with him winning a Super Bowl, it would be a little bit different. I feel like these young quarterbacks would have a much better chance. There's also veteran guys like Aaron Rodgers, who's never been on the cover. It's really hard for me to see him getting it if he hasn't gotten it by now. Uh, based on the fact, I mean, a lot of people were, were saying that last year he was rumored to be the guy, but they went the other way based off the fact that they thought he might leave the team. They might have him on the cover as a Green Bay Packer, and then he might get traded or he might force his way out and all of a sudden be in Denver or something, which really didn't make a lot of sense. We had some really outstanding receiver play last year. Guys like Cooper Cup, who was on the Super Bowl winning team, which is definitely a bonus. He wasn't just on it. He was the MVP of the game. He was the MVP of the league for the most part. I mean, he won the Triple Crown as far as receiving uh, receptions, touchdowns, yards, which is super rare. Uh, I think he set the uh, the record for receiving yards in a season. Uh, but ultimately, I mean, he's definitely a marketable player based off the fact that he was on the winning Super Bowl team. See, once again, you got to think about how the way the season ended. I mean, he couldn't have ended on a bigger high frame. He caught the game-winning touchdown in the Super Bowl. He had all the stats. He basically carried the Rams throughout the playoffs. I mean, he even caught the big, uh, you know, pass to win the game against Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. There's a lot of juice there behind Cooper Cup, and it really wouldn't surprise me. But at the end of the day, does he really have the type of personality that they want to go for? I mean, he really doesn't have one. I mean, he's a great player, but you don't really think personally personality when you think of him. Another receiver that fits the bill as like the possible best receiver in the league, uh, somebody that made a lot of headlines when they changed teams, would be Devontae Adams. Now, if you were thinking I was going to say Tyreek Hill, maybe he's another option, but I don't think he has the image that EA typically wants because of all the things that happened to him off the field in the past. But Devontae Adams going to the Raiders, uh, that makes some sense based off the fact that, you know, once again, they like to put shiny new things on their package to make you think this game's totally different and you should buy it. And Devontae Adams going to the Raiders uh, could be one of those shiny new things. I mean, seeing such a big star on a new team definitely made a huge splash in the offseason, but I don't really think he has, once again, the type of excitement uh, as far as a personality that they want. I think they probably want somebody that has a little bit more uh, of a sizzle factor, and I don't really think Devontae Adams is that guy. Tyreek Hill definitely would be that guy, but like I said, he has some some character issues that have been well documented throughout his career, and I don't think they really want to attach themselves to that. Um, but that would be you know a couple of interesting names. Uh, some interesting names at running back that I see a lot that don't make a ton of sense to me. King Henry makes a lot of sense to me. He always makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, he's just one of the um, you know one of the most imposing physical specimens we've ever seen on an NFL field. And you know the name alone. I mean he has sizzle factor for days. King Henry. You know what I mean that's like one of the coolest names uh, when it comes to nicknames in the game. Uh, but ultimately, he's coming off a season where he really didn't even play a lot, even though when he did play, he was leading the league in rushing by a lot. Uh, so that gives me, you know, pause that he could still be the guy. Uh, but the Titans feel like they're they're ripe for a, a come down to earth now that AJ Brown is not the team anymore. They don't really have a receiver to to kind of balance with AJ or 
with um, IJ Brown gone. It doesn't feel like they have the receiving core to really balance that offense anymore. And I feel like they're going to take a few steps back uh, in all reality. So that kind of takes a little bit of the sizzle off of that. Then you have a guy like Jonathan Taylor who had a monster year. I see a lot of people thinking that he might be on the cover. In all reality, he's in a similar situation. Small, uh, you know, small fan base. Not a big uh, fan base in Indianapolis. Not a lot of, you know, national attention. Even though he's a great player, I just don't see that really happening based on the fact that I don't really expect a ton out of that team. They're just not really at the forefront of the national conversation the way that I think that EA would like uh, to be with their with their cover athletes. So to me, even though he's a great player, he just plays in too small of a market, and I just don't see that happening. Why Cooper Cup could be the guy, something about that feels kind of hollow. I feel like they could go the route of a player who's on the same team but plays on the other side of the ball, and that's Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald is a guy who could easily have been on the athlete a number of years now. He's been a 99 overall player for a very long time, and he's somebody that the second the season ended when he made that final play against Joe Burrow, it seems like there was an immediately a hype train to not just name him one of the best defensive players in the league, but one of the best defensive players of all time. Something like that, I mean, to me, it seemed kind of out of nowhere. And I don't mean one of the best defensive players of all time. They were saying, is he the best defensive player of all time? So if there really is a number of people that really feel that way, that we're watching the greatest defensive player of all time, it'd be a perfect year to put him on the cover of a Madden game, especially considering that it's a year where they're bringing back some defensive functions like tackle battles and stuff like that, uh, things like you know push the pile, things like that that really are dependent on um, you know how dominant of a defensive player you are. So that is not my pick for who I think the cover athlete is going to be, but he's he's probably like one B. If I were to guess who's on the cover, I would say Aaron Donald would probably be ahead of all these other players that I'm mentioning. Although realistically, I don't think he's the player that's going to be on the cover. The next guy that I'm going to mention is a guy that I think will be on the cover, and he really fits the bill as far as um, you know, a guy that people love to use in Madden, a dynamic upcoming young player, and a guy who's in a very popular team, the most popular team maybe in the world, and that's Mika Parsons. Now, Mika Parsons did win Rookie of the Year last year. He could have probably won Defensive Player of the Year last year. I mean, he had that good of a year. And like I say, he's on the most popular team maybe in all sports in the Dallas Cowboys. So to me, when we're looking at this year's new features, Things like uh, tackle battles and push the pile and stuff like that. Things that are going to be, um, you know, right front and center as stuff that they're trying to highlight for reasons to buy the new game. It makes perfect sense to put a linebacker on the cover, which I don't think we've had maybe since like Ray Lewis. I really don't remember the last time a linebacker was on the cover. But Mika Parsons, based off of that appeal, uh, based off of that young superstar player that, like I said, they're constantly looking for to highlight, um, you know, a new copy of Madden and want you to make you run out and buy a new copy. That, to me, seems like a really good bet because he's definitely the type of player that I'm not saying he's definitely going to push uh, copies for everybody, but for the largest fan base in the sport, which is the Dallas Cowboys, it's probably going to inspire more people from that fan base to want to go out and buy this game, maybe based off the fact that he's on the cover uh, and they're going to feel like he's probably going to, I mean, he's going to be one of the best players in the game. I wouldn't be surprised if he's like a 95 overall player his second year in the league. He could easily be defensive player of the year this year, and he could really spell big things for the Cowboys uh, in in, you know, in season. So all these things combined really makes me think that he makes the most sense. But I would also put that as a caveat to me that it's either going to be him or Aaron Donald, in my opinion. I don't think any of the quarterbacks really discern themselves for one another. And I don't really think that they want to put a receiver on that. I really think they want to go with a flashier position, uh, which I think both of the uh, defensive players that I mentioned really kind of are. So that's that's the vid. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. Who do you guys think the cover athlete is going to be? Call your shot. Other than that, what do you guys think the release date is going to be? Do you think I was on the money as far as that's concerned? And how do you think your favorite NFL team is going to do this year uh, based on off of you know the off-season additions you guys have made i know me personally i'm an eagles fan can't wait for this season to start i think we're definitely winning the division uh other than that let me know in the comments section what you guys think about all this and that's it thanks for watching man my shit out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more link in the description below